Welcome to our channel. Enjoy listening to the audiobook. Write your feedback in the comments. Ralph Waldo Emerson, Self-Reliance Welcome to this big idea. The concept we've selected to explore further revolves around the virtue of individualism as championed in the essay Self-Reliance. The intriguing angle? Emerson's radical stance in the 19th century, advocating for individual judgment and self-reliance in an era that emphasized societal acquiescence. Celebrating individuality over conformity. Imagine living in a world where your independent thoughts and ideas are not just recognized, but celebrated. Now, imagine how revolutionary this must have felt in the 19th century. That's precisely the perspective Ralph Waldo Emerson advocated for in his essay, Self-Reliance. The essay is a profound work that underscores the essence of one's individuality, arguing that personal strength and contentment come from within, not from external sources or validation. It's about finding your own path, your own meaning, rather than living by others' definitions or expectations. Ralph Waldo Emerson urges readers to trust not in traditions, trusted guidance, or commonly held beliefs, but in their intuition, their unique thoughts, and personal experiences. Emphasizing on the vitality of independence, Emerson urges to step away from the confines of society's norms and expectations, and instead to trust our instincts, rely on our judgment, and embrace our unique ideas. Society often tends to suppress uniqueness and enforces conformity. However, Emerson firmly advocates against it, propelling individuals to buck the trend and be their honest selves. The crux of this essay centers on a simple yet powerful belief that individuals have the innate ability to shape their lives according to their will, strive for what they believe in, and should not be swayed by societal opinions. Emerson insists that each person carries the potential to be a genius if they look within themselves and trust their intuition, rather than trying to replicate the achievements or reflect the brilliance of others. The process of self-discovering and self-acknowledging one's individuality is beautifully penned down in Emerson's essay, where he provides a roadmap to navigate life through introspection and reflection. The real strength and satisfaction in life, he argues, lies not in mirroring societal norms and accepted truths, but in crafting your unique narrative and writing your own truth. Troubled by traditions that discourage original thought, Emerson condemns conformity, reminding us that society everywhere is in a conspiracy against the individuality of every one of its members. Throughout the essay, Emerson provides a compelling argument for personal authenticity. He insists that each person must live in the present and place complete trust in their capabilities and judgments. He expresses the need for individuals to understand and appreciate their unique life journeys, as each person's journey in life is unique, marked by their triumphs and trials, their joy and sadness, their victories and falls. Self-reliance talks about believing in ourselves in a world that constantly urges us to be someone else, someone more acceptable. The essay serves as a guide and motivation to all those who struggle with the societal pressures of conformity. A reminder that your ideas and values are valid and significant. Emerson uses several examples to illustrate his points about individuality and self-reliance. A compelling one relates to the idea of great individuals from history, such as great artists and thinkers. He argues that these individuals achieved greatness not by conforming to societal norms, but rather by embracing their unique ideas and perspectives. He brings out the example of great minds 
like Socrates and Jesus, asserting that they were misunderstood and deemed radical in their times, because their teachings and philosophies did not conform with society's accepted wisdom. However, it is precisely these individuals' refusal to conform, their inherent belief in their ideas and their tenacity to present them which won them their eminent place in history. They rejected the idea of leading an inauthentic life and chose to live their truth, despite the backlash or societal pressure they faced. They fully embraced their unique genius and instead of muting their unique perspectives, amplified them. These paragons of virtue and intellect embodied Emerson's conception of self-reliance not through their achievements, but through their unwavering trust in their internal wisdom. It's this unique, individual genius that Emerson encourages each of us to tap into. Each person must seek to discover and embrace their unique potential instead of becoming a mere echo of others' beliefs and directions. By trying to imitate others, we are killing our own potential and identity. Through these historical figures, Emerson effectively gives examples that amplify the importance and impact of his central theme, self-reliance. This demonstration serves not only as an affirmation of his broader points about individuality and non-conformity, but also provides readers with clear examples to emulate in their quest for self-reliance. According to Emerson, it's far better to be misunderstood and be true to oneself than to conform to societal expectations. He asserts that the virtue of individuality is paramount and that each person should embrace their unique perspective as a path to intellectual and spiritual freedom. Emerson goes on to make a compelling case against societal pressure to conform arguing that it hinders intellectual growth and authentic self-expression. He criticizes society for demanding compliance and attacks institutions, including organized religion and political parties, for promoting conformity at the expense of individuality. For Emerson, societal pressure is little more than a deterrent to self-growth and self-discovery. This thought can be jarring, especially to those who believe in the safety of convention. But Emerson holds firm in his belief, asserting that we should respect our instincts and ideas and use them as a compass for our life and work. This perspective positions individual experience and intuition as the highest authority, even over conventional wisdom or majority rule. Emerson's essay reminds us of the potential within individual thought and the innovation that springs from it. It's a call to acknowledge and use our own skills, to trust in our own perception, rather than lean excessively on external support or approval. 